Hello crafters, I'm Jane B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this stand up post-it note holder. I saw the idea on a video by Carrie Rhodes. Um, it stands up on your desk like that and at the front it holds a 3x3 post-it notepad and a little pen and then on the back it's got a little wallet I've got some um, postage stamps in there but it would hold a business card or two, not many <laughs> and it would also hold a gift card as well if you wanted to give this as a gift for somebody I'm offering one of these as a thank you gift to everyone who places an order on my 24-7 online stamping up shop during July 2016 the link's on the screen and I'll put it in the box below. Um, the box below now tends to be hidden so you need to either click on show more or the down arrow and then the box will open. Um, I also run a hostess club for my online customers so if you'd like to receive a hostess gift as well as one of these at the end of July um, when you place your order on my um, online shop um, if you make sure that you quote the July hostess code um, you'll be included in in the club so that you will get um, a hostess gift and you'll get one of these as well um, I'll put the hostess code on the screen and also in the box below um, but do note that it does change every month and this is the July code and also if your order is above £150 don't use um, the code otherwise you'll lose the um, stamping rewards that you will have earned for yourself anyway um, so it's any orders up to £150 okay so that's enough chat from me let's get crafting and as usual I'll start off by telling you the cardstock you're going to need I'm using Melon Mambo so what you're going to need, let me get my notepad over um, you need a piece of Melon Mambo that measures 5 and 3 quarter inches by 12 inches that's 14.5 by 30.5 centimetres you need a piece of Melon Mambo that measures two and a quarter inches by four and a half inches that's 5.75 by 11.5 centimeters you need some very very thin strands these I think are about 1 16th of an inch thick um, and that's about 0 0.02 of a centimeter but as long as they're thin it really doesn't matter which width and basically you need to be able to do six pieces across here you'll also need um, let's do these some DSP and I'm using the I've got one too many here by the looks of things um, I think that's probably not the right one um, if you've got a directional pattern like I have, I've got triangles, I want them all to go up do pay attention to that when you're cutting your pieces so you need two pieces that measure um, 3 and 5 eighths inches by 3 and 3 eighths which is 8.75 by 8.25 centimetres you'll need another piece that's 3 and 5 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths and that is 8.75 by 4.75 centimetres and then you'll need a piece that's 3 and 3 eighths inches by 1 and 5 eighths inches and that's 8.25 by 4.75 centimetres and you'll also need um, some melon mambo and some whisper white for the flowers obviously there are absolutely trillions of ways that you could decorate this um, but for the video I'm going to show you what I did here I've got flowers on the back there as well so the first thing I need to do is to score these two pieces so I'll bring my scoreboard up now I don't know why but recently I've started having problems with my scoring tool 
um, it's not scoring very nicely over my cardstock. So I'm having to use some uh, wax paper and it is making all the difference. Now this you need to score at half an inch on three sides. That's both vertical sides and one horizontal side. And in metric that is um, let me see, that's 1.5 centimetres, so it's 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, or inches, it's half an inch, half an inch, and half an inch. Okay, so the easy way of doing it is start off with the vertical side, do a, ho do a horizontal, didn't go very well with my uh, wax paper then, that's what keeps happening, it's jumping, because it's not sliding very well, um, but I'm not too worried, oh, that's going to fold up anyway, so that's alright, and then half an inch on that side. Of course, it could be that I'm not pressing hard enough, uh, but my stylus keeps wanting to jump channels. Right, OK. Now, what I'm going to do on this, I will tell you all the inches first, and then I'll go back and tell you the centimetres. So, first of all, inches, you need to score... Oh, no, let's do my wax paper first. Not forgetting the corners, of course. So you need to do at, um, this one is at the half inch and then one inch, so that's half, one, four and three quarters and five and a quarter. So in centimetres, that's 1.5, 3 centimetres, 27.5 centimetres, and 29 centimetres. Now turn the paper horizontally, your cardstock horizontally, and you need to score at 2 inches, 2.5 inches, 6 inches, nine and a half inches, ten and a half inches, and eleven and a half inches. Now in metric, that is five centimetres, six point five centimetres, fifteen point five centimetres, twenty four point five, twenty six point seven five, and twenty nine centimetres. So that's all the scoring that we need to do. Now we're going to do the cutting. Now this is where I've done my two inch score line and that's my two and a half inch score line or if you're a metric that is five six point five so it's this two and a half inch or six point five score line that we're going to be cutting on first and you need to cut up to the second score line So just cut up there, turn it around and do it again on this score line. Just cut it up to the second score line on the horizontal side. And then we need to cut off the whole of this strip. So you're cutting off the two scored lines. You can use your uh, paper trimmer if you feel more comfortable. Obviously it didn't go quite to the centre there. There we go. So that's rubbish, don't need that. And then we need to cut this side off as well. Both the score lines, we don't need either of those. There we go, so that's all rubbish now. And on this piece, we need to cut off totally 
these corners. Now what I suggest you do is just cut at a slight angle on that side and then a slight angle on that side. And then do the same this side, do a slight angle and then a slight angle there. Okay, so that's rubbish. Next we're going to do the folding. In fact, let's move those, I'm not going to be using those again. Right, so if we fold on all three lines here and use the bone folder so you get a nice crisp fold. And then this one, if, oh, we've still got a bit more cutting, haven't we? Right, okay, now on this one, you've got one more score line that's going up that we haven't cut. So cut up to the second score line there. And then cut that square off totally. And then go back and just mitre these. Just cut them at an angle. And that one as well. And then the same on this side. Cut up on this score line. Cut this square off. And then cut these two at an angle okay and that I'm going to cut slightly at an angle as well that looks if it's going inwards very slightly that one and I'll do that on the other side as well Right, okay, I'll get rid of that bit there. Now we're going to fold on all our crease lines on this piece. So when you fold these over, make sure that you get everything all lined up. those. Now we're going to start folding these ones and again make sure this fold at score line matches up with your cut line. So that's that one. The next one gets folded up as well. And then the next one gets folded backwards. On itself. So again make sure these are all lining up nicely and then this one also gets folded backwards Then this one gets folded upwards and this one backwards Okay, so what you should have here is that's going to go like that, okay, and then this is going to come up to form the box at the front. So first of all we're going to put our DSP on. So I'm just bring a scrap of paper, I've forgotten to bring over my... Um, silicone mat. Right, so I need the shorter one of these two and again if you're like me and you've chosen a directional pattern make sure that you do 
adhere it up the right way and it, whatever you choose to use it doesn't matter you can use Tombow, uh, Fast Fuse, Snail, Tear and Tape whatever is your preferred me method for this Now for this, you need to fold, have this so that your folds are going down and if you've got a directional pattern again, make sure your triangles are going up that way. So that's going to be like that. So these are now going to be the easel part. So directional pattern, I've got to make sure one goes like that and one goes like that. So I've got my triangles going upwards and triangles going upwards. So let's do those two. This pop of pink designer series paper, specialty designer series paper, is absolutely gorgeous and I couldn't choose which design I wanted to go with my Melon Mambo. I settled on this one because it has black in it and I thought I could put my black pen with that and it all coordinates nicely. Right, now we've done this. Um, putting this bit together I'm not going to show you the easy way. The easy way is just to cut those bits off and then adhere it, adhere these bits on the, like that. But I don't like the idea of being able to see the pink bits on the inside there. I want to have my pink bits on the outside. I think that looks a lot, lot neater. And also I've left the tabs on because that gives a much neater finish as well. If you, those tabs weren't there, you'd have a gap here. So if you don't want to um, have to, um, what shall I say? Um, you might find it a bit of a struggle. If you want the easy way, by all means, cut those off and just stick it down here. Um, if you don't mind a challenge like me, then do it this way. So first of all, I'm going to use um, tear and tape. I did try using um, Tombow on one of them and it worked, but I just felt, find that this one's easier. Right, now first of all, what you need is on these two little tabs here, okay, let's get rid of that now. Okay, and just want to put a little bit of tear and tape on the insides, okay, so fold on the outsides rather, so fold them in and put it on there. And you only need a little bit just so that it's going to hold. And then we need pieces on here. 
when you do this, put as close to the edge, but leave yourself a tiny, tiny little fraction there. also be needing a piece on here, this end, because that's going to be folding there. So this one we need on this side. Trouble is I can't say inside outside because sometimes on the same side, I mean that's on the inside, but although it's on the same side here, this is on the outside. If that makes any sense. I know what I mean. Right, okay, now this one I'm going to put as close to the fold as possible, but not right up to the fold. And then on this one, I'm going to put a piece on here, oops, close to the fold again. and then close to the fold now for this I do recommend either the tear and tape Tombow or um, fast fuse I wouldn't recommend snail okay so we'll do this piece first and what we need to do is take this tape off first, the backing off first and then we're going to fold it over, fold that up and then we're going to fold that over like that. Okay, now we're going to take these two pieces off And we want it to be stuck on the back. Okay, so you've got your front like that. We want it on the back. Okay, place your front, place your back. And wherever you want to position it on mine, let me show you where I put mine. Okay, so I've only got that little gap at the bottom. So that gives you as much space as possible if you wanted to put something in here larger than I have, taller than I have, you've got the room to do it. So I am going to put this in here, flatten that down first. Okay, I'm lifting mine up a little bit so that I can see some triangles. Or do I want plain white? No, I want some triangles to show. Go and then just press that down. So you got your little wallet part. Right now, this part is the tricky bit. So, what you need to do first of all is just take these two pieces off. And what we want them to do is to stay down while we're working. So you could do one side at, at a time if you like, or both sides at the same time. I'm going to do one at a time I think. So what you need to do is making sure that that stays down as best as you can. You bring this round and then before you stick it down, what you need to do is make sure this fold fits really comfortably along here and also make sure you've got a nice square box there. Okay, so I'm making sure I've got a nice straight line there. I'll squeeze that a bit to get that to come round. Need that go down a bit. 
I said that was no. That's it. Okay, and then just push that down. We can sort out the tab in a moment. And now the same for this one. Just take that piece off. And again, get that piece to stay out of the way and then line this one up so you've got a nice straight line there, you've got a nice corner, getting a nice corner around here as well and then get it to stick down. Okay. Now you need something like your bone folder to go in and get those tabs to stick up on the sides and then you'll find that you've got a nice box at the end here just make sure you give it a bit of a push so it does stick down okay nothing peeping through there and you've got all the workings at the back here and on the other side here you can see all of this you can't see the pink bits Okay, so now the last bit is to do this, we just take the covering off, if you fold it up like that and then fold it back, you should be able to just fold this over, it should close beautifully. But the reason I say don't make the sticky come right to the end is just in case you're a fraction out with your scores, your folds or anything like that. It won't matter for the overall project but it would leave some sticky exposed. Okay so once you've done that, it's best before you start trying to push this down because you're going to squash your box put a notepad in there and then once that's there you can use your bone folder and push that seam down nice and tight and then to do the other side move that over and then push that down okay so you can see all the workings in there without spoiling the view from the front Okay, so what I did to decorate was a lot of this you will find now it's a lot easier if you work with the pad in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these so that I have the right length. Okay, so if that's that one, if that's correct then I just Cut that one correct as well. Now that should be all the same, but I don't take um, a chance on it just in case I've cut one piece a fraction longer or shorter. I've obviously been using something sticky with my scissors that got stuck then. There's one, two, and then there was one for the back, which I did at the top here, I think, didn't I? Yes. For gluing this, I've still got um, some of my two-way glue pen, which unfortunately we have stopped selling now. Um, so for this bit, you could use if you've got the fine tip glue. Um, what do they call it? Fine tip glue. Um, I've got one here somewhere. I know. Oh, here we go. 
fine tip glue pen you could use that but this is very very narrow so you do need something really quite fine and then let's do the front first On there. And then one parallel to it. And then one top and one bottom here. You see, that's where it's a lot easier if you've got the pad in underneath. really quite quite wonky and then this one at the bottom And then on the back, we're too near the top. And then the last one. Beginning to get some glue on my fingers now. So the strips are wanting to stick to me. Right, okay, so that's that. Now for the flowers, I used a grateful bunch for what I've done on this one. And that's what I'm going to do again. Oops. Another pad, put that one in. There we go. Alright, you see that? Yep. Um, and I have already made my flowers, but I will just make one set um, to show you how I do it. Um, first of all, this is the great bunch, and it's these three flowers here that I'm doing, and it comes as one stamp and there's a punch that will punch all three out at the same time as well okay so this is a stamp and when you stamp it down if you make it so that the little flower is up at the top there we go I've used melon mambo ink obviously And this is a punch. Okay, three flowers. Now I tend to struggle with punches that are doing more than just one thing. So what I do is, I'm not sure whether this is going to work sitting down or not, but once I've got it in position and I'm happy, I keep it holding tight like that and then I place it down on my table and then I push it down like that. My wrist just can't cope with it like that. So that's that. Then what I do to my flowers, I take a pencil and just curl the, the petals. And 
around with this one oops, and just roll it around my pencil one way, turn it 90 degrees and roll it the other way. And then I adhere them all together with Tombow. Now, when you put these together, you can either line all the petals up like that, or you can make them at an angle. And I definitely prefer them when they're at an angle. So what I do is I get these ones lined up up at the top and then check down here because if you're not really in the center then the bottom ones will go um, they'll line up with the other petals so you do need to make sure that you are in the correct position top and bottom there we go like that now this one's only got half the amount of petals as that one so I really don't worry too much about where that goes and I don't worry about fluffing up my flower until um, that's when I'm truly dry. So here's all the flowers I made earlier. Now what I've done with this one, I've copied it across. I did two on Whisper White and then one on um, Blushing Bride. And then on the back I did the reverse. So I did two on Blushing Bride and one on White. And that's exactly what I've done here. So I should have three of these ones, three of these and with these others because I did those just in case I didn't like the effect of these which I really didn't think was going to happen because I think that looks really lovely in fact I might put those ones on the front yes I'm definitely going to put those ones on the front Um, but whatever gets left over, it will go into this, which is one of our DVD boxes, one of the thick ones. And this is where I keep all my ready-made flowers. I used to just put them in with my colours, like Pool Party. That would have gone in with my Pool Party cardstock. But since we got the Botanical um, Builder framelits, these are so 3D that I started to put them in here. And then I started putting everybody in here. And it's great because whatever project I'm working on, I want flowers, I go straight to that first and see what I have. Right, now these I am going to adhere with Tombow. And what I do is try and get them sort of centrally. I line them, line this on my grid paper so that I've got um, nearly two inches that side, nearly two inches that side. Therefore I can see that eight is halfway. So for my first flower I'm going to place that so it's level with eight. Eight is this line up here. that's that one and then where I put this one I'm going to twist it so that it's not the petals are going in between each other and then however much I've got coming over there I'm going to make sure I've got coming over the edge over here so tilt that so the petals go in with each other Why has that not worked out? That's two inches, two inches. I can't see a straight line. I really can't. Let's move that over a bit. I'm much better at just judging these. Well, the theory's good anyway. Doesn't work out too well with me. Let's move that one back over. There we go. That's fine. That's fine. That looks good. And then I'm going to turn it over I'm going to put these three on here. I could have those, couldn't I? In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I think the darker ones look better here. So let's see if I can get it right this time. Let's put that back again. You got two inches, two inches, right? There's my Tombow.
Right, let's try that again. Right, eight is the middle. Right, let's do petals pointing down to the eight, see if I can do it that way. And then this one. No, don't knock it over. Right, see how much you've got hanging over there. Oh, there we go, that one's all right, I think. So there we go. That's today's project. Um, black pen. Oops. And there we go. Don't you think that's a terrific little project to be making? Nice little gift to give to somebody. Um, what should we have in the back of this one? Uh, well, that looks. Oh, I've just got my flower. Right, let's just put that in. Okay, so there's the gift card gone in there. Put my flower back in position, and there we go. Many thanks for watching my video today. Oh no, before I go, I've got a couple more to show you, haven't I? Right, this was the first one that I made, and this was using the DSP that comes with Foxy friends I can't name can't think of the name of the actual pad um, but I used uh, petite petals for this and I put a ribbon around here when I did this I put a little bit of Tombow on the ribbon so that it stuck at the back and then once that had dried I brought it around and then tied the bow um, just a note and again I put the grey strips there and then on the back I put sending a smiley away I thought it was quite appropriate with the postage stamps there and of course the butterflies and I do have a gentleman as a customer so if he purchases for, from me during July um, I thought I'd do a male design so I white embossed the men's hats from um, Guy Greetings and then on the back I've put the sky's the limit okay so there's ideas for you um, I've, I've obviously got uh, quite a few that I'm going to be making of these if you're the person who receives this one because you're a customer of mine you can think back to the video and remember what a fuss I had trying to get these flowers straight anyway don't forget if you want to me to send you one of these um, as a thank you gift for at the end of July please place an order uh, via my online stamping up shop. Many thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the box below or email me at jambi at jambicards.com. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today, not the pens nor the post-it pads of course, um, please click on the 24-7 link that you'll find in the box below and again the box below is hiding behind either where it says show more or there's a little down arrow um, and that will take you straight to my 24-7 online shop. If you've enjoyed my video please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.